Hello and welcome to another French Cheeks Top Tip video. I'm Craig Phillips, their brand ambassador. In this video, I'm going to show you how to transform these dull, dark, black ceiling beams. This one is a hollow section that goes over a metal RSJ, but this is a solid piece of timber that is normally up in the roof space. However, they're both painted black and are quite dull. So our transformation is going to make them look just like this, which is beautiful, light, real oak effect timber, which is going to give you a lot better appearance than the dull black beams like this. And all I'll be using is one of French Cheek paints and one of their furniture waxes. The tools and products I'm going to be using are French Cheek concentrated sugar soap to clean the beams down with some sponges and a bowl. Then I'll be painting them with the creme de la creme, which is part of the lazy range. I'll also be applying some browning furniture wax, two types of brushes, one for applying the paint on and one for applying the wax. And I've got a variety of sharp tools there for creating a de-stress look on the surface of the softwood hollow beam. Now the two beams that I'm going to be working on are very different. This smaller one here is a solid piece of timber. It's good quality. However, it's been painted matte black, so it looks a little bit dull and boring. But there is some nice effects on there. It's been cut down with a bandsaw of some sort, and there's lots of little defects and splinters all over it. So that'll be quite easy to transform. However, this artificial beam is soft wood. It's a smooth surface, and it's just boxed in around an RSJ. It doesn't look very attractive. So this is going to need more work on it to start with, de-stressing it before we can make the transformation of it to make it look like an oak hardwood quality beam. I'm going to start by mixing some concentrated sugar soap up with warm water. Give my beams a good scrub down to make sure there's no contamination on them. Of course, if these were in situ and fitted onto your ceiling, you just have to be a little bit more careful whilst cleaning them. And of course, you can mask up around the edges so you don't affect any of the plaster work around them. Rinse it through, dry it off, and then you're ready to start doing the work on them. I'm going to start by painting the solid beam with French Cheeks chalk paint, which is the creme de la creme from the Lazy Range. I'm going to give it a nice little stir like this. Beautiful, thick and creamy. Look at that. No dilution, straight out of the can. This solid beam has so much natural cragginess and defects in the beam, it provides the perfect surface for a light paint and a darker wax combination. This is touch dry within one hour and ready for a second coat within two hours. Now for the fun bit, adding the browning wax. This is really, really easy to do. Get yourself a nice stiff brush, plenty of wax on there and simply start to paint it on. I normally brush it like this to start with and then I give it a bit of a curl like this just to make sure you get in all of the gaps. And already straight away, that to me is looking fantastic. Plenty of wax on it. And again, like with the painting, you don't have to be neat. You can really work this in hard making sure you get into every little nook and cranny on this natural piece of timber. Now I've spotted some little black dots in here where the wax is gathering in between there and that's been some form of dry wood rot or wood worm of some sort in the past but it looks kind of real authentic and makes this timber look old and worn. So if you haven't got that, a great way of getting it or adding to it and I'll certainly be doing it on my plain beam. It's an old piece of timber with a couple of nails actually hammered into there. And all you have to do along the top is do this. And then you apply a bit more wax on and that wax catches in those holes and really gives it that old woodworm, dry wood rot effect. Once you've applied your wax, you can leave this for about 10, 20 minutes and it's starting to penetrate and dry into the paint and the timber. You can get yourself a little soft side of a sponge and give it a little bit of a dabbing to take a little bit off it 
Some people want to buff it in and make it a lot lighter. Some people prefer it darker, the choice is yours. Some people really, you know, want to work it in which, I'll do a little bit here where you can see it will go a little bit lighter if that's what you choose the look you want to be. I'm not doing it too hard, I'm just taking the surface off there. But what's happening is it's still staying in the actual grooves itself. And all them little holes and all the scarred edges of the wood is holding on to that wax. And that to me, I think looks fantastic. It really, really does look great. Now these both beams started off exactly the same. They had a matte black paint on them. They were quite dull and uninspiring. I give them the same type of TLC, clean them down with the sugar soap. Then I applied the creme de la creme. On here, two coats. On this one, just one coat. Let that dry. Then I got my wax. This was the browning wax. I applied a coat on here, a nice heavy coat, and I applied one coat on here. Within about 10 or 15 minutes, I wiped this one off with the sponge to make it lighter, and this one I didn't. And this has given us this very dark effect to it. So the choice really is yours. You can go from the lightest beam right the way down to the darkest beam. All you need to do is experiment with it. I'm sure you will agree with me that the artificial beams look bland, a little bit boring. They're plain, smooth timber. It's matte black. It's quite uninspiring. What we need to do is get this looking pretty much the same as them. So I have to distress this surface all the way around by using a variety of sharp tools, really, from hand saws, hammers, chisels, um, block plane, as you know, even drill bits and a block of wood with the nails in them. So I'm going to start by taking this sharp edge off here using the block plane. This instantly takes the sharp edge off, removes some of the paint and you can start to create this rough curve on the edge which will make it look and feel like a natural piece of solid wood timber. Now the next stage I'm going to use a braddle and try to create a bit of grain effect in the surface of this timber. It has already got grain, you can just about see it but of course when we apply chalk paint on there and put thick layers of it on it, you're not going to see that grain in. So I'm going to make my own. I'm going to use this sharp edge. What I'm doing is if we've got a knot in the centre there and the grain splits off. Now I'm going to get a small chisel and I'm just going to take a few little edges off here. Whilst I've got the hammer, I'm also just going to do quite a few little deep scars in it from the claw edge here by just sticking them in like this. And then it tends to look like it's had something nailed to it at some point, maybe been plasterboard of the ground. Right, next up, you can get yourself an old saw and make a few little odd scores in it like this. Now on real pieces of timber, if they are suffering with a dry wood rot of some sort, you usually find it's at one end and it starts to work its way in to the centre. So that's why I've made more holes with the nail ends on the edges and the corners of our false beam. So now the damage is done on your beam. Now it's time for the fun bit, applying the paint. And again, I'm using French Chic's creme de la creme from the Lazy Range. Still always going with the original grain of the wood. It's kind of the basic rules really whenever you're painting any materials. Now I've left my first coat of paint to dry for about four hours. It's touch dry, not completely cured of course, but it's still okay to apply the second coat. When you're painting a smooth surface, like a door or your skating boards or your walls, you want to get a smooth flat finish. Now on here, we don't, so I'm going to do a thing called overworking the paint. Putting too much on, just giving it four or five, even ten minutes, depending on the room temperature, for it to nearly dry, and then dragging it with the brush. It's 
normally a no-no on the walls and as I say on the doors and skating boards etc but on this material this textured grain effect it's perfect so I'm putting a bit too much paint on so now my second coat of paint has at least four hours to dry I'm ready to apply my wax again using my wax brush plenty on there to start with and of course you don't have to be neat when you're applying it you're just spreading it all the way across the area and already you can start to see it catching in them scars that we made on the timber so now I've applied a layer of wax across the front and the top section of the beam you can still see a little bit of sections where I'm stopping starting it with the brush so I'm not putting any more wax on it I'm not taking any off I'm just kind of feathering it, it's called and skimming across it and it takes that kind of brush mark out that the wax and the let's call it a stumpy brush is leaving in it by just feathering it very gently across like this now bear in mind I've used a creme de la creme on it first and the browning wax French Chic have got hundreds of different colors of paint that you could choose and you could use and four different shades of wax so just imagine what you can achieve when you're being creative now I've come to buff this with my sponge and I've actually left it soaking in for probably about an hour, an hour and a half and it's a little bit too long, it's dried off a bit for me. So what I do is get a little bit more just on my brush, just wet the top of it a fraction. I'm actually adding more on to take it off if that makes sense, but just watch the difference it is now. That's the kind of look that I want. You know, looking at that end of it there now is a little bit different than what it is here. It does start to look like a beautiful solid light oak beam. You know, that's been in one of them Georgian Victoria houses for hundreds of years. Now remember if this was in situ and of course fixed to your ceiling, You'd have to mask up along that edge there where the actual beam meets the plaster work to protect it so you wouldn't get any further paint or, or any further wax on there. So that's applying a bit more on then to rub it in and rub it off. So that's how you transform them old, dull, dark black beams in your house to something beautiful like this. If you're looking for more how-to videos, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Frenchy TV. But if you're looking for more inspiration, head over to the Frenchy Fan Forum on Facebook. And if you just want to know about the materials I've been using, check out the website, frenchypaint.co.uk.